Hello and welcome to Small Screen Stories. This is the show where I go over all the news in the world of entertainment and pop culture. My name is Edward Lauder. I'm the editor of Small Screen. Uh, before I start off, if you could like and subscribe over on YouTube, that'd be wonderful. Uh, I just need to check that this is working on YouTube. Uh, and yes, it is. It's brilliant. That's working. Uh, and if you're watching over on Facebook, then if you could also, uh, well, you don't subscribe. If you could like the video and follow uh, the page and also like the page, that would be, re be really, really helpful. Thank you very much for that. That would be lovely. Uh, so let's get straight into the news. And all this news you can find over at small-screen.co.uk. Uh, so I'm trying to do. I'm trying to multitask here. And um, happy Thursday, first of all. And all of the news is the news of the day. This is the stuff that's been going on. Well, today. And there's actually been quite a lot of stuff that's happened today. So let's get straight into it. And the biggest bit of news that's come out of today has been the cast for uh, The Sandman. So it's only a partial cast at the moment. And uh, uh, people on Twitter have been saying that um, while this has been kind of forced, uh, like n really a lot of uh, fans and sites apparently like small screen have forced Netflix's hand and basically they've said okay we've got to just release something about this show because it is actually filming at the moment uh, we knew for a long long time that, that Tom Storage was going to be playing Dream that was confirmed today the thing we also knew was that Gwendolyn Christie had been cast in the show uh, but we didn't know which role she was cast in well Netflix today confirmed that she is going to be playing Lucifer which is, as far as I'm concerned, fabulous casting. I think that's a really, really good choice for the role uh, because if you've read the comics, you'll understand why I think this. So this is a very different Lucifer to... Well, of course, it's a very different Lucifer to the one in Lucifer in, in the show. Um, Tom Ellis's version is one that's kind of geared towards um, a certain... Well, I'd say a certain demographic, but it is. It is geared towards a certain demographic. That's that's something that is just it's just there. Um, this show, it looks like they're going a lot darker. It looks like they're really following the, the comic book uh, and the comic book series, so the graphic novel series. And in those books, um, while well, Lucifer only actually appears at the in the first volume, I think. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the first volume. And uh, and one of one of the things that they mention in, in in the graphic novel and is actually there in the art in the artwork as well is that Lucifer's kind of uh, is a man but could also be a woman and um it's like it's just a very beautiful thing like creature that you can't really tell that you just everyone seems to be quite drawn to and that's something that i think gwendolyn christie actually has in spades um she is she's first of all a brilliant actor uh she's like in she's fabulous in uh, the game of thrones i thought she was really good as captain phasma in uh, in the star wars uh, movies but she wasn't given enough time in those films to really develop that character but this kind of thing she's obviously done very well in the um that i think they must have, they must have done uh, screen tests and stuff like that and must have she must have auditioned for the role i'd have assumed but she must have just done really, really well, which is the reason why they've decided to cast her. So I'm excited about that bit of casting. I think it's some really good bit of casting. And um, I did focus on that because it was one of the bigger things uh, to come out of this cast list. But the other things that were announced was, yes, Tom Sturridge is playing Dream. Uh, Vivian um, Akiyama Pong. Um, I, I'm, I really, I am sorry if I've uh, mispronounced that. Please let me know how to pronounce it. Um, she will be playing uh, Lucian. Uh, Boyd Holbrook is the Corinthian, which is actually really good casting. Charles Dance is going to be playing Roderick Bur Burgess. Uh, that's another uh, Game of Thrones alumni there. Asim Chowdhury is playing Abel. And, um, and Sanjeev Bhaskar is playing Kane. So it's a, s a relatively small cast list. Uh, we don't, for instance, they didn't tell us who was playing uh, uh john constantine but of course we already know um and uh, one of the reasons why they might have released this is because they kind of wanted uh that conversation to be stopped so they wanted people to really focus on the fact that gwendolyn christie's playing playing lucifer and i think that's a big a big thing um boy uh boyd um holbrook Hol yeah holbrook sorry is playing the corinthian the corinthian 
uh, in the comics is the um, uh, one of one of the kind of nightmare creatures that comes into the real wor- world when Dream is uh, captured and uh, imprisoned, and he kind of it's a horrible, horrible creature that has uh, mouths for eyes, and that's uh, a rather disturbing picture I've probably put into your heads. But it is he is a very fascinating villain. Actually, if you've listened to the Audible version of the Sandman, which I think is like the first three volumes, I, I think, uh, then in that, that's Riz Ahmed that plays the Corinthian. Brilliant, uh, brilliantly done in there. I was hoping that he might get to play him in, in, the, in the show as well, but it looks like they went for, went for Boyd Holbrook. But that is more kind of in line with the, the drawings in, in, the, in the comic book, so that kind of makes more sense uh, if they're going to be comic book accurate. Right. I'll move on from all of that and move on to another bit of uh, Netflix news, and that's that Lupin Part 2, its release date on Netflix has been revealed. It's going to be coming this summer. So that was something that we actually knew already, but Netflix officially confirmed that today. So yes, we will be getting, uh, I think it's five more episodes uh, this summer, so 2021. Earlier than I was thinking, I I was thinking it might come out towards the end of the year, but no, they're bringing it... Uh, pretty early actually uh, in um, in 2021 but of course they already actually have filmed those five episodes so all they need to do is edit them and put them out I mean all they need to there's still quite a lot of stuff they need to do but it's an interesting way that Netflix is starting to release things um, they're doing it a lot now is that they're doing shorter seasons but releasing them in two parts so well no, they're doing this. So they'll do like 10 episodes. They'll film 10 episodes and then cut up into two into two parts or two seasons, but it's more parts. Um, so if you've watched Lupin, which now is one of the most successful shows on Netflix, and that's brilliant for uh, French TV shows. Uh, they're doing really well, actually, on Netflix. Um, yeah, if you've... Uh, so that, that particular show has been watched by 70 million households uh, in the first 28 days, making it the third biggest Netflix original of all time. Uh, and it's behind another show, which I'm going to talk about in a bit, uh, which is Bridgerton. And that's actually been revealed that it's uh, Netflix's most successful original series of all time, uh, having been watched by 82 million households in its first 28 days. They thought it was going to be around the 62 million mark. They had predicted that. But no, it's done really, really well. And it's on 82 now. So it's officially overtaken The, the Witcher season one. And uh, Lupin season, well, part one was in second place and now is in third. And I believe after that is Stranger Things part three and then Money Heist season four. Sorry, Stranger Things season three, Money Heist season four. And uh, and then what was wrapping up? Uh, the Queen's Gambit is is there as well. So it's a very good year for Netflix. Um, Lupin Part Two is doing really. It, it will probably do really well. Lupin Part One did really well. Bridgerton Season One did really well. Season Two will probably did re- will do really well. And uh, and then uh, the Queen's Gambit also did really well. And also Tiger King did well this year. So it's been a really good year for for Netflix and 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 for their originals in particular. Right, moving on. Uh, moving on to our exclusive of the day, and that's that uh, Robert Rodriguez will direct an episode of uh, the Boba Fett series. So the Book of Boba Fett is called. Uh, I don't know why I said Boba Fett that way. But yeah, this is something that um, we've kind of been try- trying to figure out what's happening with this show for quite a while. We were told it's going to be a mini series that's going to be four episodes long. That could change, but as uh, at the moment, it's looking like it'll be four episodes. Of course, Robert Rodriguez wasn't actually originally involved in The Mandalorian. He directed The Tragedy, the episode called The Tragedy in season two, which was a brilliant episode and was the first episode where we really got, got to see Boba Fett in action. And he obviously has a, an understanding of this character, of this the, 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 the version of the character that we've got now in the show, which is a very different version to the one we had in the original trilogy. But I like this version. It's a more kind of humble, more uh, honorable version of of um of Boba Fett which I really do like so what's this show going to be about well I don't really know at the moment I have been asking around but it will be a mini series it's not um the Mandalorian season three as many people were reporting uh, it's it's four episodes long currently being filmed in the UK as we speak so it's in that that they're filming it on that stage with the 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 high tech um, screens behind them so they can film incredible vistas and stuff inside in in a safe space which is really important for Lucasfilm and uh, and yeah Robert Rodriguez it was revealed by a source to me that uh, 
he is, I'll, I'll bring it up here, here's the, uh, here's the quote. Robert Rodriguez isn't just an executive producer on the show, he's also directing one of the episodes of The Book of Boba Fett. All I can say is that he's doing at least one of the episodes, can't confirm if he's directing more at the moment. So that's something that I am really, really excited to see. Um, of course, him being an executive producer is quite interesting because Robert Rodriguez wasn't actually originally hired to direct that episode of, of The Mandalorian Season 2. He was a last-minute replacement, and uh, he's, a, he's a friend of John Favreau's, and John Favreau asked him if he could do him a favor because their director, the director who was origi originally hired to do that episode, that fell through. I think they either had um, conflicting schedules or you know scheduling problems. Um, so he came in to direct it, Robert Rodriguez, and who, like, who better to direct that? And it turned out that he really, really worked on the show, and um, and yeah, it looks like it looks like all all things, all good things are happening there. So he's not he's not only an executive producer along with John Favreau and Dave Filoni, he's also a director. So let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below. Right, moving on, and moving on to the next bit of news, which is that WandaVision fans think the Marvel Studios series is teasing Magneto's arrival. So why do they think this? Well, it's actually not in the... It's in the episode before last. So episode two is where um, people think they've seen this tease. And it comes it comes actually during the, the magic show that they put on, that, that, that Wanda and Vision put on. And during that magic show, so I'll just get it up. Vision says... He, Vision refers to a cabinet of mysteries as a magnet of crystories. And in other words, a magnet of or magneto. <laughs> magnet o. Yeah, magnet of magneto. So fans are now thinking that this is a direct reference to magneto. But this isn't the only reason why people are thinking that magneto will be involved in the show. It's actually one of the other reasons is because um Paul Bettany actually revealed that he got to work with a um an actor that he's already always wanted to work with in WandaVision. And um this let me just get the quote up here. He was talking to uh da -da -da. So he was talking to who was he talking to? The thing is this is a lot of um Right, where did I find it? It was... It says a major actor hasn't been leaked yet. Here we go. Consent. So, um, he said, so many things get leaked, but there's this thing that has been completely under wraps that happens. I work with this actor I've always wanted to work with, and we really have fireworks together. The scenes are great, and I think people are going to be really excited. I've always wanted to work with this guy, and the scenes are pretty intense. So who is this actor that uh, that Paul Bettany always wanted to work with? Well, I, I looked through his... Um, uh, his uh, with the films he's been in sorry it's quite late here <laughs> um and he hasn't worked with a particular actor that is has been involved in the marvel movies before and that's sir ian mckellen and if you're british sir ian mckellen is a is a, is a national treasure and uh he's obviously someone that a lot of actors would love to work with but he doesn't actually work he doesn't he, do, he does a lot of stuff but obviously an actor like Paul Bettany might not always get the chance or the opportunity to work with him. I was thinking it was the possibility of two actors. I was thinking it's between Sir Patrick Stewart and Sir Ian McKellen. I think that this Magneto tease means that Magneto is going to be turning up in WandaVision and actually it'll be Mag uh, Magneto played by Sir Ian McKellen. In the article, I was kind of like, I'm not so sure if it's going to be Ian McKellen because that m means that that would have been quite a difficult um, thing to to just shoot especially with covid but actually a lot of wonder vision was shot before all of that and they might have just got that out of the way and done really early and the other reason why i think uh, magneto is a really good shout is actually because magneto in the comics is wonder maximoff's father so this i think would be a really interesting thing to to kind of explore in this Wonder Vision show, I am asking around, but it's, it's really, really kept under wraps and uh, these sorts of things. Uh, Marvel is very, very careful to make sure that this this doesn't this doesn't leak. But I'm let's say I am seventy percent sure this is happening, and if I get any information on it, I will let you know as soon as I as soon as I do. But you know, you've heard it here. I think uh, Sir Ian McKellen is going to be turning up as Magneto in the WandaVision series. I think that's the actor that he's alluding to. But let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below. 
Right, moving on from WandaVision and on to AMC. So it's being rumored by uh, Daniel Rickman. Yeah, he's back. Uh, he's making an appearance today. That AMC is planning to make to do 10 more years of The Walking Dead. So The Walking Dead is actually finishing with season 11, the main show. But they also have The Walking Dead World Beyond and Fear the Walking Dead. They're making these movies, supposedly a trilogy of films with um, with Rick Grimes and um, Andrew Lincoln back as Rick, Rick Grimes. So there's a lot of content out there and amc i mean you know they've been doing well in the stock market recently but they're, they're in they're in prob you know they're not in a good place financially and they really do need something like the walking dead in order to just stay solvent so they need a show that performs as well as the walking dead does they can't afford to just drop it they need to they need it to continue for as long as they possibly can uh so it means that we're going to get we are going to get 10 more years i'm pretty certain of that and um it's a sh I mean, it's a shame because I think maybe they went on for a bit too long. It's just one of those things. It's like people, these shows go on for so long. And uh, they, they do, for me, The Walking Dead has lost a bit of its charm. Um, what, actually, a while, a while back, I'm, I, I'm, full disclosure, I don't watch Fear the Walking Dead. And I haven't been watching The Walking Dead World Beyond. My, for me, it was always about season one, the Frank Darabont season. I loved that season. And then it kind of went a bit downhill after that. But there have been big moments and I always tune in to see the big moments. But apart from that, I just wish they'd kind of end it. But then I understand why AMC is feeling the need to keep it going. But let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below. Right, moving away from TV news, if you can tell, I, I changed, I flipped the show around a bit. So I started off with TV news because the bigger news was TV today, especially with um, Gwendolyn Christie being cast as Lucifer. I wanted to run with that. Uh, but Patrick Stewart revealed he talked to Kevin Feige about playing Professor X in the MCU. So this is something that a lot of fans have been really looking, well, hoping they might see um, Xavier back. And a lot of people would love to see uh, Patrick Stewart. So Patrick Stewart play play him again in the MCU, where he was talking to Digital, Digital Spy and he said... I met with Kevin Feige a couple of months ago and we had a long, long, con we had long, long conversations and there have been moves and suggestions which include Charles Xavier. Here's the problem. If we had not made Logan, then yes, I would probably be ready to get into that wheelchair one more time and be Charles Xavier. But Logan changed all that. So it really, to me, looks like Logan for, uh, for Patrick Stewart, for Sir Stewart, was really something that it was very important to him. It was a, it was almost like a, it was a goodbye. Um, it was a chance for him to say goodbye to the character. And I think in his head, he's pretty much he's finished with that character. Logan was his end point. The thing is, is that everyone has their price. So if Marvel Studios were to say no, hit look, just look at this check. This is for you to come back as Charles Xavier in like one movie. Uh, I'm pretty sure he'll say yes. I, I don't think he he would turn that down. Yeah, every, as I said before, everyone's got everyone's got their price, um, which is just one of those things about the world. That's how the work the work that's the way the world works. Uh, money does talk, and uh, Marvel Studios and Disney has a lot of it. So I think there's there's a possibility of him coming back as as Charles Xavier. Will they recast or would they bring in James McAvoy? They could do that, but then again, I think James McAvoy is also pretty much done with the character. So, um, mm, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I don't know. I'd give it like a 40% chance of happening that that, um, <laughs> that Patrick Stewart comes back. I think that it's more likely that Sir Ian McKellen would come back as Magneto rather than um, Sir Patrick Stewart back as Charles Xavier. But let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below. Right, uh, a little bit of uh, filming news. Um, so Chris Hemsworth and Chris Pratt have been reunited in some new photos, which are, you can find on the Daily Mail. I wasn't able to put to put them on small screen because I don't have like a lot of I don't have any money to pay paparazzi let's just say that so I couldn't really pay for those images and I didn't want to use them illegally uh, which I saw a lot of sites doing but they're filming uh, Thor Love and Thunder now filming has started so Chris Pratt is over there in Australia along with Matt Damon is there as well um, Christian Bale is in the is in Oz as well so it's all it's all kind of things all go as far as um, Thor Love and Thunder is concerned are you excited for Thor Love and Thunder this is the, probably the Marvel film I am, I yeah, I think I'm most excited for this one, mainly because it's written by Taika Waititi, the the film that Thor Ragnarok he directed, but he didn't write it. And I think um, I like the fact that Marvel is giving their directors 
or filmmakers more creative freedom and letting them actually write these things, which is has in, in the past kind of been written by commission, um, well, not commission, by committee, sorry. So a lot of people involved in the writing of these scripts, whereas like with the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, they let James Gunn do his thing. Uh, and with the Thor movies, they're now letting Taika Waititi do his thing. It's the same kind of thing with the Russo brothers, although th those films were pretty much written by committee. But they're, they're giving their, their directors a bit more... Um, leeway which is something that I'm pretty sure Edgar Wright would have liked to have, <laughs> them to have done with the Ant-Man movie but even Peyton Reed now is getting getting more uh, creative freedom as it as is probably John John Watts although John Watts is probably a bit more of a shooter you know he comes in to shoot the thing and it, that it seems as though Spider-Man 3 has been written by a lot of people uh, whether or not Fantastic Four will be I don't I, I'm not I'm not so sure but you know, it's they're letting directors um, just kind of put their spin on things, and you can really feel that some of these movies are directed by certain directors, like especially with the Guardians of the Galaxy films and uh, the Thor movies, like Thor Ragnarok and now Thor: Love and Thunder. We're probably going to see Taika Waititi's kind of stamp on that film, like we did with Ragnarok, just even more so because it was actually written by him. But let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below. Um, some interesting news uh, came from Reddit, actually, that Leica is working on an animated Batman movie, and that's going to be coming out in 2024. They're actually working on two films, um, and one is untitled. I don't know what that film is, but the, the second one will apparently be a Batman film, which I think is a brilliant idea. So if you don't know who Leica, what, who they are... Um, they're a, a movie studio, but they, they uh, specialize in stop motion. So they made films like Coraline. They made Paranorman. They played Missing. They made Missing Link. Uh, they made Kubo and the Two Strings, which is great. And they also there was another film that they made uh, that I'm blanking on the name right now. Oh, The Box Trolls was the other film they made. So uh, they, they've made some really really good movies, and uh, basically all their movies are worth seeing and, and are really interesting. And they're they're animated films. They they are I suppose classed as children's movies but they're films that really do explore kind of quite dark and mature themes if you're to watch for instance Coraline that's uh, again an, another Neil Gaiman uh, book there uh, that is a brilliant adaptation of that book by the way that is a brilliant brilliant adaptation it looks incredible and um and and the themes explored in that film are really in that film are really really mature uh, something that you might not see in a lot of uh, kids movies nowadays the one thing I do love about great kids movies and great animated films is that, that they do do that they do look at more mature themes and explore those and they're not afraid to like it is one of those um, companies a lot like Pixar so the idea of them doing a Batman movie to me is really fascinating because yes you know ultimately the Batman comics are are slightly more uh, they they are slightly more mature um, than than most comic books, and they are meant for an older audience. But there is there is scope there to make a child's movie, a child's you know a children's Batman movie. We saw it; they they did that with the Lego films, and I thought they were really good. I love the Batman Lego movie. I love the um, everything that Batman was involved in Lego wise. I thought it was really fun, uh, and I think Leica could do a really good job with this and I think working in stop motion I think that would just look incredible and um, would really kind of fit almost like the Tim Burton vibe of Batman and uh, I really really love this story and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do with it and I hope it's true uh, I'm pretty sure it is but uh, you know there's always that possibility that it might not happen which uh, which uh, is a bit upsetting but like it takes a long time because it's stop motion they take a long time to make their movies so this is why it's, it's scheduled for 2024 and I think it shows that Warner Brothers is kind of thinking outside the box as far as their DC Comics characters are concerned and willing to kind of uh, license them out to people like Leica that can make some really fun things with them. Uh, let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below, by the way. Uh, right, uh, the final story is that there was a um, a big kind of promo for HBO Max for their 2021 movies that was released. And in that promo, we saw some new footage from James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. We also saw some new footage from uh, June. Um, I just want to check the, the films like the, the next Space Jam movie. There was some interesting footage from there. Uh, what else was there? I'm just, I just want to check. Um, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, and Mortal Kombat. They, they were the films that were really kind of put prominently in this um, uh, in this promo. The the scene that was the, the the Suicide Squad scene, which was the most interesting. There were some kind of uh, you know slow motion walking shots, which you get in a lot of um, 
comic book movies, but there was a a fun altercation between John Cena's character, Peacemaker, and Idris Elba's character in the movie. And it kind of showed, the, I think that one kind of, uh, <laughs> it is an altercation between the two of them. It's heated, heated to, like a heated exchange. Uh, it shows that this movie, first of all, was going to be R-rated because uh, Peacemaker almost swears and they cut. And I'm pretty sure in the movie he's actually going to swear. It also shows this kind of wacky vibe to the film, which really is brought by James Gunn being involved. And um, also the look just looks really weird, just seeing John Cena in such a ridiculous outfit. It, it looks like a lot of fun. I think that's the thing it's going to be. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be mad fun. And uh, I cannot wait for that. I think uh, the DC comics movies universe is really really in need for something like that and in need for someone like James Gunn hopefully they can keep him on board for a Suicide Squad 2 uh, I don't know if this whole HBO Max thing is gonna is going to allow them to do that because a lot of people are quite annoyed with Warner Brothers at the moment which is to be expected because of what they did with the whole HBO Max thing they kind of went behind all the um, the creators backs in order to get that made which is a bit silly but um, hopefully fingers crossed They'll get James Gunn back for uh, Suicide Squad 2. Uh, right, that's it. Uh, that, that's all the news that was on, on small screen. You can go over on the site now and have a look at some of the, the articles and a bit more in depth than what I went into in this live. Uh, if you'd rather listen to this as a podcast, you can. You can find that wherever you get your podcasts at Small Screen Stories. If you uh, are listening on Apple Podcasts, then please uh, give us a five-star rating. That'd be really, really wonderful. If you could also like and subscribe on YouTube, that'd be great. And uh, follow the Facebook page, like the Facebook page like the video and share the video that'd be really wonderful if you could do that um these i do these things on tuesdays wednesdays and thursdays and it's it is a lot uh but i love this and i love talking to you guys and um you know hopefully this can get bigger which would be really really great and uh what else you can follow us on on social media you can follow us at small screen co that's on facebook instagram and twitter and also go and check out the site as i said before which is at small-screen.co.uk you can follow me if you'd like at uh on on twitter at uh, ej lauder and with that, I'll say goodbye. Have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you guys next week. Cheers. Goodbye.